Jay, how are you doing? Hey, man, I'm good. I'm glad to be back, um, getting back on the saddle, dropped a video today, and I've got a few more up my sleeve that I am prepping for. But yeah, we're going to have a blast, PG, man. Thanks for having me as usual. Oh, yeah. It's, you're welcome. Listen, NCAA 25 got announced while you were gone. So, oh, uh, so we're going to be hitting the sticks, that. right? Lost my mind, dog. <laughs> lost my mind. I lost my mind. So, yeah, All right. I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. And you know what? We'll kick it off here. We're going to talk about these wide receiver duos for Oklahoma because when we hit the sticks in NCAA 25, we're going to be able to test these duos. But 247 released the list of what they think the best wide receiver and QB duos going into the season are obviously Dylan Gabriel. Uh, you would expect to see him up at the top of the list with Tez Johnson, who was uh, an outstanding wide receiver last year. Noah Fafita and uh, McMillan. They killed us. They torched us in that bowl game, but there are some interesting wide receiver QB duos on here. Jackson Arnold, Nick Anderson, of course, being at the bottom below Will Howard and Emeka Egbuka. And then they left off for some reason a Deion Burks, Jackson Arnold wide receiver duo, which in fact, I think I was telling you in the green room, I think Oklahoma has an opportunity to have two guys as one of the top duos in the country. So looking at this list, I want to kind of get your thoughts here and, you know, kind of think, who do you think is going to be the best QB wide receiver duo here at Oklahoma this year? So here at Oklahoma, I think it's funny. We we see it's like right. It's crazy that on this list you had number ten. You actually had Jackson Arnold on there after <laughs> everything that went down at the uh, at the Alamo Bowl. While at the same time recognizing the talents there, you can see it. You can see how good he is. And all you got to do is clean up everything that makes the most sense. Like you know, make sure his wide receiver doesn't fumble the ball twice in the red zone. If you do that, then I promise you, he his number is going to look a lot better than you would expect as well as the, his own turnovers of forcing passes. But I digress on that. Seeing him and Jack, him and Nick Anderson at the bottom tells me a lot of things. One, it tells me that they're, uh, that 247 is very high on Nick Anderson, right? I'll have a video to break this down as well a little bit later. But the main thing is they're high on Nick Anderson, which you're supposed to be, right? And you mentioned Deion Burks, and I'm, I'm cool with that. I think that that's a good one. But honestly, he's fourth on my list. He's number four on my duo. Okay. I lead off with, with Nick and Jackson Arnold because I've seen them together. Okay. Number two, I lead with Jackson Arnold and Jaden Gibson because we've seen them together. And you saw what they've done together with deep passes and catches and stuff. Um, heck, that little flick pass that uh, Jaden Gibson did, who was against Arkansas State, uh, yeah, <laughs> Arkansas State, flicked it to himself at the back of the end zone. He was like, oh, kid, kid's getting there, right? And... And uh, Kendall Dolby came on the show a couple weeks ago before I left on vacation, and he talked about he's like, man, he's one that he's a sleeper, man. He he's he's he has a high catch radius, and he's and he's got some jets. He's got power. We've watched him run people over to get his touchdowns, and so you're like, oh no, he's gonna be something, right? Third on that list, the one that we're forgetting about, only because he got hurt, <laughs> Andrew Anthony. I don't think Andrew Anthony is gonna coming. come back injured, right? He's gonna come back healthy. I think he's going to come back healthy, and when he comes back healthy, no, he's going to be nasty out there, right? I'll put Burks as fourth, followed up by Jaleel Farouk, which when Farouk doesn't fumble, dude's like money, right? It's pretty money, especially on the deep ball. We've seen him do his cuts. He has the agility and cutting ability to do stuff, and we still haven't got down to Brendan Thompson, who caught a deep touchdown in the bowl game where you're like, oh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to run track players, right? Hmm, makes sense. So, if you ask me, it's between Nick. It's Nick Anderson's number one. He's definitely going to be the the the, 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 the go to guy. He's going to be the guy that's probably to force the most passes. But I'm thinking that you're going to see more Jay Gibson out there. I think you add Burks um, mixed in, you know, with Andrew Anthony if he's healthy. If, if Anthony's not as healthy as we would like, then I put Burks at third because I think he's going to be a big piece when it comes to playing slot if he plays slot. I can easily see him being on the outside with Nick, him and Nick as your bookends, and then they throw Farouk in the slot because he's more of a possession guy anyway. So you got options. You got a lot of options. And if you go four wide, then, of course, you got you got Gibson there with Burks or Farouk. It's, the possibilities are endless, and the best part is everyone that I mentioned has caught in the pass from Jackson Arnold at least once except for Burks. And... 
I, I'm, I'm obviously looking at this list. I had quarrels, right? Because they ranked Jackson Arnold and Nick Anderson at 10. And I believe Nick Anderson led wide receivers this year in touchdowns at 10, correct? No, right. he had and, nine. Uh, nine, Stoops nine. And Luther Burden was right behind him, right? Right, correct. Yeah. It, I get it. Brady Cook, that Missouri team, they won a lot of games. There's no way Brady Cook's better. I, I, I'm looking at quarterbacks, right? There's no way Brady Cook is better than Oklahoma. And I, I even look at this list and say, I think Shador Sanders and Travis Hunter are too low. And and I because, get you there. I get what you're saying. And it's and this is the reason why, I, this is what I see out of it. Because you're 100% right on that. I would not take, there's probably three quarterbacks on this list I'd take over Jackson Arnold right now. But the thing is, is Jackson Arnold's also the least experienced quarterback on that list. So you kind of have to put him at 10, right? He got to still prove himself. Even though he showed us some flash in the the bowl game and when he came in against BYU to close it out and made some plays that we appreciated, we still need him to prove himself. He still has got to show us that he's the Gatorade National Player of the Year and he's not going to be cursed by it. And he's going to actually be productive. He has to prove that. And so because of that, everybody on this list has at least a year of starting experience. Everybody does. Most of them have two. No. Totally get that. And and, and I think I'm looking at it as just the duo together because there's some guys on this That's list fair. that I'm kind of like. Like Jackson Dart and Trey Harris. I mean, come on, right? Jackson I Dart had a pretty solid one. season last year, though. Okay, okay. What about number one? Quinn Ewers and Isaiah Bond. What has Isaiah Bond done to make us think that? he could be one of the best wide receivers in the country this year, paired up with Quinn Ewers, who really isn't that accurate of a quarterback. I'd say this, and this is this is kind of in defense of what Quinn, of Quinn in a way. Like, I, I'm not as high on Quinn as everybody else is, of course. Like the media, we're all you fans, of course, we're going to hate. But objectively speaking, I'm still not very high on him uh, because if I felt like he's as good as everyone is telling me he is, he should not be at Texas this year. Like, there's no reason to come back. If you're as good as everyone is advertising, why are you coming back, right? You were supposed to have been a top five pick going into this draft before. Now, I get coming back because the draft class is now stacked with quarterbacks, and it looks like J.J. McCarthy is going to move up into a top five draft pick, which that's another story for another day. But what Quinn Ewers did with A.D. Mitchell last past season, I get why they think him and Isaiah Bond's going to be because Bond was in theory, one of the better quarterbacks at Alabama last year. He wasn't the best in my personal opinion, but he was one of the better quarterbacks there. But also think about this PG Quinn here was able to take AD Mitchell and then put up the numbers and put up the plays. He did. I ain't gonna say numbers, but plays he did when he had him last year. What can he do with Isaiah Bond? Right. That I think is where the question comes into play. What is that going to look like? I just, I, I, I look at, Isaiah Bond's numbers. I don't think they're as good. I, I think he's getting a little bit of, I came from Alabama love and I'm going to Texas, right? I, I think he's getting a little bit of that love because he's coming from Bama. And I think I want to look at why did he transfer out of Alabama? But is like, that a good thing for him though? Because, um, because we, we all question um, uh, uh, the, 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 the quarterback that's not on this list is who we questioned, right? We question that quarterback that's not on this list with him playing with him. So you have to ask the question, right? All right. Is, is that a really a good thing? Uh, is that is it a bad thing that he transfers? Put it like that. Because Jermaine Burton was, of course, their top wide receiver, statistically. It, of course, now, of course. Bond was right behind him, and he was probably the next safety net in there because he was the top guy, top catch. You get the most catches on the team. He's had the most yards. But I think Burton was the top dude. But at the same time, as you just stated, right? He left Bama. Is that a bad thing with the situation that was going on last season there? I mean, was he going to be as productive as you would have hoped in that if he stayed, right? Or if he had a better, you know, if he had a better quarterback? I mean, Milro only threw for 2,800 yards. So if he had a better quarterback, if he had like a Quinn Ewers who throws the ball, throws the ball deep, does he do better? I, I, I kind of get what you're saying. I kind of get what you're saying. You're saying. That's what an argument to me comes in objectively. If you look at it, like, like I said, you try to look at it objectively. That's that's where you you can debate it. 
what does that look like if he if he had a different quarterback? And I'm not saying Milrow's bad, but Milrow's also not on this list <laughs> for a reason. Yeah, Mil. Listen, Mil Milrow is a good, serviceable quarterback. I don't think Milrow's Agreed. winning you a national championship. If I had to redo this list myself, I think you got to put Dylan Gabriel and Tez Johnson number one because Tez Johnson was one of the best wide receivers in the country last year. Obviously, Dylan Gabriel, we know you give him you give him good coverage, he's going to be able to get the ball down the field. I'd put no Fitta and McMillan at number two. They had an excellent season. They had an excellent bowl game. And I think there's a lot of expectations that they're going to come out and really kill it. And then I would move Cam Ward and Xavier, and I believe it's Restropo? 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 I'm not sure. But yeah, you know, he, he had over 1,000 yards last year. Yep. <laughs> we all know Cam Ward's that dude. Even with the even with the quarterback with the, with the TDD, <laughs> I, and then and then I think I moved Jackson Arnold and Nick Anderson up, right? And then I put maybe Shadur Sanders and Travis Hunter. I got to put Quinn Ewers and Isaiah Bond after that. I just I don't see them being top five unless Quinn Ewers comes out and is improved on his accuracy at least by five percentage points. I mean, he was. I think a 63% completion percentage this year. I say my only argument that I would have would be, um, my only argument would be on that is we got to still remember that Sarkeesian's a pretty good offensive wizard, right? Overall, he's pretty solid on the offensive side. The question is, is Quinn, can Quinn Ewers execute on the offense that he needs to in order to be successful in the games? I don't know about – I. if it was me, I'm putting DG in Tez Johnson first. We've seen what DG can do when he has really good wide receivers. Statistically, he's all he's putting up 3,000 yards every year, period. So go ahead and move him up to the top one. You gave him Tez Johnson. He's like I said, he had 1,000 yards last year. And in that offense, the one that Bo, Bo Nix ran so beautifully, Dylan Gabe is going to be just fine. He's going to cook. I'd put Noah second. Um, I'd actually put – I probably would have put Shadura Sanders and Travis Hunter up at third. And just because we've seen what they do when healthy, I mean, Shadura Sanders threw 4,000 yards and Travis Hunter is a monster. And I think that they're going to probably have him play one side of the ball come next season because they've gotten a few more players to help. I would have put, I would put Quinn and Isaiah Bond at fourth. Yeah, um, I think I like huh? Shadura and Travis though is, is Travis going to see the field that much? On, on the offensive side, Peter. I could see them totally putting him out there offensively all the time. I can see them playing him more on offense than defense going forward. But at the same time, they may just have him play both sides of the ball because he wants to. I don't know. I don't know. He's that talented weird. at safety, though. Like, he 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 could be a first-round safety. He could be a first-round corner, too. I mean, I know. He's, that, he's just that talented. So, uh, But I've moved Cam Ward and them down probably to fifth with Beck and them. If, I, if there was anything I would do with Jackson Arnold, I'd move him up to eighth above Jackson Dart and Will Howard. Okay. I would move him up to eight, but you wouldn't move him above Brady Cook and call. Luther Burton, huh? Not above Brady Cook and Luther Burton? No, only because we watched what Brady Cook and Luther Burton did last year. The question is going to be: Can they can they continue that and continue to replicate and do that again? Okay. Now, there's no guarantee that they do that, but and and, and I question the Georgia one because I feel like Georgia likes to use their tight ends too much, and I I'd be curious mm -hmm. to see if they use Dominic Lovett as a. You know, as a guy that go out there and get a thousand yards receiving, like I, I really question that because we've seen what I they do with the tight ends and they quite, and they get so many of those in that room. I, I just don't know if they could be in the top five. So Carson Beck's a good quarterback. Don't get me wrong. I just don't see the Georgia offense offensive scheme working that well in their favor. Yeah, you got a lot more faith than I do. I don't. I still question. So looking at the OU quarterback or uh, OU wide receiver room. So you got Nick Anderson, number one, Jaden Gibson, number two, and then number three, you would alternate between Andre Anthony and Burks, depending on how healthy and Andre Anthony is going into the season. Yeah. And I anticipate he's going to be back. He'll, I think he'll be, I don't, my understanding of it, his, his knee injury wasn't devastating, but. I mean, it was devastating for Oklahoma. You have Andre. Well, Anthony. I mean, you probably win at least one more game. Oh yeah, yeah. Granted, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think it was. It was. He he came in there and he was a force. 
So it made it so much easier. But I think at the same time, I think it was less about us losing him and more about the coach trusting everybody else around. That's what it felt more like to me. Okay. Right. So, yeah, I, I get you, it. You didn't trust him. Like we should have, we should have trusted the other players and let them do their thing. We'd have been fine. Just, you know, you should never let your Heisman candidate quarterback throw less than the guy uh, on the other side of the field as him when you're in a close game. That's just my take. And I feel like we're heading into what? Emmett Jones year two. Yeah. Second season. Oh yeah. He started, he, he came the same day as Andrew Anthony did. These wide receivers are going to be a lot better this year than. Oh my God, they're going to be done. <laughs> Look at how well they improved in year one. I mean, year it only two took is going to be a year to go in there and get them cleaned up. That ether, man, they're going to be out there sh- cooking, folks. 